It's that time again. Hello gardeners and welcome back to the school garden. I got lots of awesome responses to the seesaw activity that I posted last week. Lots of you have started your garden journal. I saw some awesome covers with pictures of fruits and vegetables and spider webs and all sorts of things we see in the garden. And I see that you are making lots of careful observations of what you're growing in your Grow at Home kit. Some of you have had sprouting seeds already. If your seed hasn't sprouted yet, be patient. It will happen soon. So what's been going on in our garden this week? Holy moly, lots is happening. So remember last week when I showed you the pot of potatoes? Those potatoes were growing off of the stems under the ground. They're actually not roots. They're called tubers. But I had replanted hey, those potatoes plants. so they could keep growing under the ground. I went and visited Holy them this week. Moly. This is something I've never seen before. Wow. Our potato plants have been completely eaten up by these tomato hornworm caterpillars. Wow, remember last week? I found one small caterpillar last week. There must have been more. They have completely eaten whatever was left of those potato plants. I see one, two, three, and one little baby, four, tomato hornworms. Now why are these tomato hornworms eating our potatoes? Well, tomatoes and potatoes are cousin plants. They're part of the same group of plants that we call nightshade plants. And they have flowers that look similar. Very interesting. A while back, wow. I found a tomato oh, hornworm on my tomato plant in my garden. Oh my gosh, and check out what happened. I was there right as he dropped that off of the plant and started his process to becoming a chrysalis. He wants to eat the tomato anymore. I think he might be done eating. I think he's ready to turn himself into a chrysalis. And these guys. They don't just make a chrysalis on the end of a branch. They like to burrow into the soil. And then they turn into a they, they build their cocoon while they're underneath the ground. So this is actually really interesting because I've never seen this happen before. For those of you who remember Rocky from last year or the year before, Rocky tried to do that in our enclosure that we had for him and he didn't make it uh, so maybe he had maybe these guys have to be outside to do their burrowing anyway i find this fascinating he is he's ready to turn into you guys remember what a tomato hornworm turns into a sphinx moth or a hummingbird moth because the moths uh, flap their wings just like a hummingbird this is pretty cool. Pretty cool how this is happening. But let's speed up this process a little bit anyway. So this guy will completely cover himself up with soil. He digs only about one to two inches down underneath the soil. And then in a few weeks, they become a hummingbird moth or a sphinx moth. So I found that sphinx moth in, actually I found this one at Lafayette. It was on the piece of 
one of our logs in our garden. Isn't it cool how camouflaged it is with the bark of the log? This one is a hummingbird moth I found in my garden at home. I've put it in slow motion so you can see how it moves its wings back and forth like a hummingbird. If you sped it up, you could hardly see them. It's almost like a blur. Well, friends, I came for my weekly search of the caterpillars on the milkweed plant. And guess what? Look who I found right on the fence. Hello, little guy. Wow. Oh, but there's not just one. There's another one. Hello, little guy. Him. Oh, oh my gosh. There's three and four. We hit the jackpot today. We're like the monarch caterpillar <gasps> nursery. Wow, there's five caterpillars and <gasps> six caterpillars. Soon enough, we'll be looking at these guys. The monarch butterflies will be back in our garden. See you next time, gardeners. Have a great weekend.